Hey, what's up, family? This is Pastor C, and I want to welcome you to Emmanuel's virtual experience. Listen, y'all, we are so glad that you have decided to join us today. Y'all hear me say this all the time. So many wonderful churches to choose from, but the mere fact that you're here with us, it means so much to myself and the Emmanuel family. Listen, y'all, it is September. Can you believe that? It's already the ninth month. This year is going by fast. I don't know if you know this, but in the Bible, the number nine symbolizes divine completeness or it conveys as finality. Have you been praying to God about some things in your life to be completed or for some things to be final? I need you to declare this in the chat this morning. This is my season of completeness. Come on, somebody put it in there. Come on, come on. I see it. This is my season of completeness. God is about to finalize some things in your life. Do me a favor this morning, if you're watching, I need you to like this video, like this video. There's a thumbs up that you can press just to let us know that you like this video. Also, I need you to share this video. What an amazing tool to be able to witness to somebody. Listen, I don't know about you, but for the past two months, we were talking about transition and we were talking about preparing for the move. There was somebody that needed to hear those messages. And what you can do now, if you didn't get a chance to, you can now share and like and tell somebody about what God is doing here at Emmanuel Out of the World on Sunday mornings. I'm telling you, it's going to be a great month this month. There's a powerful word that's going to be coming forth, and you don't want to miss it. Listen, guys, I'm going to get out of the way. I've been here long enough, but I'm grateful for each and every one of you uh, for being here with us at Emmanuel Light of the World. So many wonderful churches that you could have went to, but we're so glad that you are here with us. Sit back, relax, grab your family, enjoy this service today. Have a blessed, blessed and wonderful day. Hey, what's up, family? I love this part of the service. This is a part of the service where everybody can participate and be a part of. It is time to give. I need you to put in the chat, I'm ready to give. I'm ready to give. There's a passage of scripture I want to give you. We've heard this before. It's found in Proverbs 3 and 9. It simply says this, honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase. Now, I don't know about you, but I know this year for some has been a very hectic year. It's been a time of transition uh, financially for many families. But I want to remind you, as you continue to honor the Lord, as the Bible tells us in Proverbs, with your possessions, the things that God gives you, your finances and your first fruits, God is going to increase you in every area and every aspect of your, of your life. I want to know if you believe that. Somebody just type in the chat. Come on, say, I believe that. I believe it. Some of you have experienced God's increase in your life. Even through a pandemic, God has blessed your house. You hadn't missed a meal. You haven't missed any finances. God has given you more than you can handle, even some to give away to some people. So God wants us to honor with our first fruits and our possessions. Listen, guys, there's a couple of ways that we can give this morning. We can give via our cash app. It's dollar sign E-L-O-T-W 5415. Dollar sign E-L-O-T-W 5415. You can give via our cash app. Also, you can give via our website. Our website is www.elotw.com. You can follow the prompts for giving and you'll be able to get via our website. Listen, those watching in our Emmanuel family, let's give. Well, Emmanuel, as you are preparing your seed this Sunday morning, and some of you guys have already taken the time to give for service today. You have already taken the time to give um, on our website or Cash App. And we just want to say thank you so much and we appreciate it. These are your announcements for this month. We're encouraging all of the members of Emmanuel Light of the World to be a part of our Saturday morning prayer. We come together on our Zoom platform and Facebook to engage in a time of powerful prayer together. I'm telling you, we are seeing the move of God like we have never seen before. We are seeing and hearing so many testimonies even as we are coming together and we are in prayer. Thank we thank you so much. Your presence is necessary. And so make sure that you join us this Saturday at eight o'clock. Check your remind for more information. Calling all teens, calling all elementary age students, middle school and high school to join us for our Kingdom Kids and No Limit Teens. You can join us on fourth Sunday for Kingdom Kids at 12 o'clock on our Zoom platform. Thank you parents for making an attempt to make sure that your kids are present. We and these have been your news and events for the month of August.
Hey, what's up, family? Just wanted to thank you, myself and Pastor Ruki, for your continual generosity as it relates to giving. I'm telling you, I said it earlier, but God wants us to honor him with our possessions and our first fruits. God is bringing increase into your life, and we're grateful that you are continuing to be obedient in this area as it relates to giving. Thank you again for giving. And you can just repeat this after me. If I receive this word with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. But if I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, over my flesh, over my feelings, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need form and fashion. I need life. Well, good morning, Emmanuel, light of the world. I'm Pastor Rakia Wright. And as always, um, it's just a privilege and an honor to be able to come before you all and deliver God's precious word. I'm just excited. I'm excited about what the Lord has been doing in this year, but I'm really excited about what we're about to jump into in the month of September. Um, but before I give you that, I just want you to just create an atmosphere of worship right where you are. Maybe you're driving down the road. Maybe you are in your home, in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are. I just want you to just begin to lift up the name of the Father this morning because he is worthy to be praised. I don't know what your week has looked like. I don't know what your morning has been like. I don't know what you're carrying, what weights you might have on your plate right now. I don't know what news you might have received, but whatever it is, I just want you to take a moment and just begin to release your cares upon the Lord, because I believe that somebody needs to hear that this morning. The Lord said to commit our way commit our cares unto him because he cares for us. And so right where you are, you know, we can build an altar right where we are. And so I'm building an altar right here in the sanctuary this morning. And I'm saying, Father God, we bless you. We give you all of the honor. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise. Father God, whatever we are carrying into this worship moment, we release it at your feet right now. And we just ask that you would invade our space, invade our home, allow us to have a supernatural encounter with you like we have never had before. Father God, I thank you that there will be something that will be said today that would radically strengthen and challenge and change the people of God on the other end of the screen. Father, we say, have your way. We say, move how you need to move, minister how you need to minister. You know, the areas, Lord God, where we need ministering the most. And so, Father, I thank you that it's your word that is able to do just that. And so, Father, we say have your way in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, you guys, I decided to take a seat this morning and uh, do a little bit of teaching this morning. I'm not going to be before you long, but this is the first Sunday in September. And so here at Emmanuel, and typically every uh, first Sunday, we're beginning and starting a brand new series. And so I'm super excited. I was so blessed by last month's series, actually the last two months series on prepare for the move. And just because the, se the series is over, it doesn't mean that the season is over. God is still preparing us for the move. God is still accelerating us and transitioning us into greater things. But I, we really felt like the Lord was speaking a new thing um, in the month of September. And, um, and I know that, you know, that, you know, God is so mindful of each and every one of us and he gives us words and teachings that will help us in the seasons that we're in. And so we're gonna be speaking from the subject for this entire month, Lord willing, we're going to be speaking from the subject in God we trust, in God we trust. And I just want y'all to type that in the chat box this morning, in God we trust. Amen. You know, um, just being a very sensitive person to what the Lord is speaking and how the Lord is moving, um, the last several weeks, 
um, I really just felt like in the spirit and maybe those who are um, just sensitive in that way have probably felt the same thing. But I've really just felt in the seasons that we are in right now that the enemy is releasing a lot on or trying to release a lot on the believer. And there's many things that he's trying to release, many weights um, that he's trying to release upon the, the church. Um, and one of the things that I really sense in the spirit that he's trying to release upon the believer is that of fear, is that of fear. And there's many words that can relate to this word fear, such as anxiety and worry and concern. And so it's just different ways of speaking it. But I really strongly sense that, um, that that's something that he's wanting to um, figure out if he can find a door um, to allow fear to set in, to allow fear to set in. And um, I believe that, you know, it, it, it's very clear. I can, I can see it, I can sense it in the spirit. And so these are some things that I've been, uh, really been praying about that myself and Pastor Chuck has really been praying and covering the believer that even in the seasons and the times of that we're living in, because we're really living in some very turbulent times. And so even the times that we're living in, I'm praying that our faith is guarded in this time and that we as believers, as the church, would not find ourselves losing faith or having our faith fail us. Um, in, in seasons that seem a little rocky, in seasons and times that seem a little unknowing. And so um, I really strongly feel that. And so the Lord is, 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 is called us into even a new prayer watch. And I shared this with our prayer team this past Saturday, um, that God has taken us even to a, a different prayer time um, around that 12 to three o'clock a.m. And so maybe you're listening in on uh, this service this morning and you're saying, you know, God has been waking me up around that time and really been quickening my spirit to begin to pray. And it's simply because he's calling forth the intercessors in this time to begin to war. We are really under great spiritual warfare as a nation, you know, as a people, and he's looking for intercessors. He's looking for people that would literally stand on watch during this time and begin to pray intensely in the areas of just spiritual warfare, amen? And so he's calling us to do that in this hour. He's calling us really the church to begin to pray. And so maybe you found yourself in, in seasons and in times of just being so worked up with everything that is happening around you that maybe you have neglected your space and your place of prayer. Maybe you've neglected um, just your place of, of devotion and time with the Lord. But hear me, Emmanuel, light of the world. You're hearing it from, from your pastor. God is bringing us and he's leading his church, especially the intercessors, amen? And he's creating even a, a burden, a prayer burden on our hearts in this area of spiritual warfare because there is some intense, intense spiritual warfare that is happening right now in the earth. And so he's calling forth these prayer warriors, uh, you and I, to begin to pray. And so if Holy Spirit wakes you up at, at, at 12, at, at 11, I mean at 12, at one, at two, don't roll over and go back to sleep, woman of God, man of God. Rise up and begin to pray because he's given you a burden for a specific thing that he's needing for you to press through and begin to pray. Say, I receive, Pastor. Amen. You know, and, and not only has he called us into intense times of prayer, especially during that watch where there's heavy uh, spiritual warfare, but I believe that God is calling us even to a place of worship. Amen. God is, God is calling us to a place of worship. And I couldn't quite understand what the Lord was speaking in regards to this. And I just began to worship and, and set aside time, not just for a prayer, not just for the word of God, but setting aside separate time where I can just indulge and engage in times of worship. So even if you're listening, you're saying, Pastor, I can't sing. Pastor, I'm not the best vocalist, right? It doesn't matter. God is wanting us to 
um, to begin to sing, to begin to worship. And he reminded me of, of when Paul and Silas were in uh, prison. Amen. They were locked up. They were behind bars. Amen. And the scripture says is that they began to pray and they began to worship. They began to sing songs of worship. And as they began to worship, I need y'all to catch this in the spirit. But as they begin to worship, the prison doors open and not just their prison doors, but everyone who was held captive, their door open. The chains fell off. Amen. I need you to receive this today. And so when God is calling you and quickening you to begin to pray and to begin to worship, know that it's not just about your little circle. It's not just about your life. It's not just about your family, but God is placing a burden on the children of God to begin to worship and to begin to pray pray. A mentor of mine told me, said it like this. He says, the reason why God is pushing us into places of intense prayer and places of intense worship, specifically worship, is because what worship does is worship conditions the atmosphere for the move of God. We are living in a time where God is wanting to begin to do some things in his church, but also in the earth. And where there is intense warfare, he, he needs people praying. Where there is an intense warfare, fair. He needs the atmosphere condition for the move of God. Amen. And so I know it seems a little like it's just a song. No, it's not just a song, but God is calling us to begin to condition the atmosphere of, 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 of worship and move of God and what God is wanting to do. He already spoke to us, Emmanuel, and this was last year. He spoke to us and he said that he is going to release a fire that would not be easily extinguished, but intensify through disciplined prayer, through pure worship, and through the Word of God. And so I don't want us to lose sight of that. He said, every time that I come before you guys, that I remind you of what He is calling us to. Amen. And just remembering that it's not just about what He was doing in your life, but He's using us, Emmanuel, amen, for the work that He is doing in the earth. Amen. We can turn on the news and we can see that COVID cases are rising. We can see that 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 there's a lot of things that is happening in the earth. Amen. Um, there was even a new case uh, of, 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 of Corona, a new strand developing already now in 39 countries right now. Amen. And so a lot of the times when we're seeing and we're listening and we're watching things happening all around us, what tends to happen, and we don't want it to happen, but what tends to happen is that fear begins to creep in. Fear begins to set in. Amen. Say hallelujah. And the thing about it is that um, when these fears begin to set in, what the Lord began to reveal to me is that as these fears begin to set in at the root of the fear, because maybe you're on here and you're saying, I'm dealing with fear, I'm dealing with anxiety, and it has heightened in this season because of everything that is happening in the earth. Amen. I already had my fears and I already had my panics and I already had these things going on with other situations in my life. But now with everything that is happening in the earth around me, and it seems like things are coming back to a, to a head and intensifying a little bit greater. Amen. It seems like these fears and anxieties are beginning to get the best of me. I can see it, I can feel it, and I see that it's there. But what the Lord began to show me and reveal to me about this, and this is what we're gonna begin to, to tackle today, is he says, at the root of all fear, watch this, if you're taking notes, write it down. He says, at the root of all fear is really an, an inability to trust. Let me say it right here because somebody just, just missed it. Amen. At the root of all fear, no matter what it is that you're fearful of, no matter what it is that you're anxious about, but at the root of it, it's really an inability to trust. Amen. And what I really realized about fear, because I've had my fears as well. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. But when I began to think about fear, what fear, what your fears really reveal about you is a lack of trust. Amen. And I know you're speaking and you're saying, Pastor, I trust God. Pastor, I trust, you know, I have faith. I have all of these things. Amen. But at the root of fear, what fear really reveals is a lack of trust. Amen. And where there is a lack of trust, it really reveals 
a lack of knowledge about your God. I want us to catch this today, amen? At the root of trust, where, 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 where trust is not there, it really reveals a lack of knowledge. Or maybe you've forgotten some things, amen, about who God is. But either way, it reveals a lack of knowledge or a lack of remembrance of who God really is. Amen. And I believe that many of us have some people in our lives right now, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, we have somebody in our life right now that we don't trust. Can I get an amen? There's somebody in your circle. Maybe you trust them now, but maybe there's a time where you didn't. Amen. And we can think of someone in our lives right now that we can't trust, that we don't trust, and really, you don't even see it in the near future of you trusting them then. Amen? Because they have done something to you. They have done something to your experience with this individual was so bad that it caused a breach in your trust. Amen. Have you been there? Just say, I've been there, pastor. I've been there, pastor. Amen. And the thing about trust is that it doesn't mean that you don't love them. Amen. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that you don't trust them. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Amen. I know that we've been there. I know that some of us have been there and some of us are there right now. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that maybe you just are having a difficult time trusting them because trust is a beautiful thing. Can I get an amen? Trust is a beautiful thing. Amen. And I believe that trust, it doesn't just come, but trust has to be developed. Whatever relationships that you have, trust must be developed. And the way that trust is developed is that trust is developed through consistency in your positive experiences with that individual. Amen. The reason why you trust people, the reason why you trust your spouse, the reason why you trust, you know, a friend, the reason why you trust a neighbor is because they have been consistent in their experiences with you. Amen. And it's been positive experiences that you've had. And so if that's the way that trust is developed, then when trust is breached and trust is broken, the only way that it can be rebuilt is through consistent experiences to help rebuild that trust. I hope this is help. This is helping somebody's marriage right now. Amen. And I believe that when that trust is rebuilt, I'm going somewhere with this. When that trust is rebuilt, there is a rest there. Can I get an amen? When that trust is rebuilt and you've had enough experiences that have been positive, that trust begins to rebuild because there has been consistency in this area and you're able to rest where you was once anxious, where you was once fearful, where you was once worried. Now you are resting in confidence. See, trust brings a resting. Trust develops a confidence in that individual. Amen? See, when you are fearful, the reason why you are fearful is because there is no trust. There is no confidence. And so you're always looking over the shoulder. You're always checking things out. Amen. And it's doing nothing but, but causing more anxiety and more fear to be built up. Why? Because there is no rest and there is no confidence in that individual. Once trust is broken, rest and confidence is replaced with fear and anxiety. Are y'all hearing me today? Amen. And once that person begins to put their hands on that very thing that you uh, 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 don't trust them any longer with, amen, you immediately begin to be struck with fear and struck with anxiety. 
Why? Because the trust is broken. Say hallelujah. I'm going to say it again like this. It takes consistent experiences, positive experiences to trust again. Amen. For some of us, the relationships that we have right now, it may take a week to trust again. It may take months to trust again. It may take years to trust again. But the person who is trying to regain the trust has to be consistent with their positive experiences in your life for that trust to be regained and for that relationship to be developed. Amen. But aren't you glad, Emmanuel, light of the world? that God has not been inconsistent with you. Aren't you glad, Emmanuel, light of the world, that God has never been late for you? Aren't you grateful that the Lord has never betrayed you? He has never left you hanging. He has never left you on the edge. Aren't you grateful that the Lord has never hurt you? That he's been a very present help, even in times of trouble, even in times of difficulty. Aren't you grateful that you are in a relationship with a father that loves you more than you can even explain? His love is unconditional and never ending. We serve a God like that. We serve a God who is consistent with our experiences with him. Scripture says it like this. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means whatever he did five years ago, amen, he's doing it today. And whatever he's doing it to doing today, you can rest assured. You can put your faith and your confidence in the fact that he will be faithful even to the end of time. Amen. He's been faithful to us, Emmanuel, all of our life. You can trace him. You can track his faithfulness. But why is it that we're still living in fear? Why is it that there's certain areas of our lives where we are struggling to trust God? We are struggling to trust him. And I'll tell you why. Because there is some knowledge of God that is either missing or has been forgotten. There, there's some knowledge of God. There's some understanding in this area. If we're struggling with trusting him with our provision, there is something that we have missed about God as the provider, as Jehovah Jireh. There's some knowledge of him that we have not grabbed hold to, which has left the door open to fear in this area. And I believe that God wants to rebuild some pillars in our lives this morning. Matter of fact, this entire month, I believe that God wants to rebuild the pillar of trust. Amen? I believe that he wants to rebuild the pillar of trust in our life where we have failed to trust him in this area. I believe God is building a pillar and a foundation of trust in the lives of the believers. That every issue, every crisis, every virus, every problem, every situation will have to bow down to him. I believe everything that we're going to face, everything that we're doing is going to have to bow down to the pillar of trust because there is a rebuilding and there is a newfound knowledge that the Lord is going to begin to reveal to you in this month. Where it doesn't matter what happens and what comes your way. That you're going to have the type of trust that is immovable and unshakable. The type of trust that when a situation begins to arise, that peace begins to flood in. I just need somebody to receive that today. 
We're going to be reading from a scripture today. And I'm not going to be before you long. I'm, I just feel like there's a word that the Lord wants to release to the house. And it's found in Psalm 91. And we're going to look at verses one through three. And I'm going to read it as you have it stand all over your house, wherever you are. I want you to stand and let's reverence the word of the Lord together. That's Psalm 91 verses one through three. And it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, and I'm just gonna to continue to read, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in the darkness. This coronavirus is walking in the darkness. Nor for the destruction that was at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right, but it shall not come nigh Thee. Just go ahead and put that in the chat. It shall not come nigh me. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. And we can continue to, to read and continue to see the promises of God in this scripture. But this morning, I'm just going to hit on maybe the first um, three verses, maybe the first two verses, actually. But I want us to see something because we're trying to rebuild a pillar of trust in areas where we've allowed fear to creep in. Amen. It may not be in all areas of your life, but maybe you can think of something that maybe you've heard or watched or something that you're dealing with within your own self that that you're saying fear is there. Because sometimes even in our prayers, thank you, Holy Spirit, sometimes even in our prayers, although we are praying, sometimes we can even pray from a stance of fear. Amen. And we're praying from a stance of fear. We're not praying from faith, but we're praying out of fear. And we're pleading and we're begging and we're doing all of these things and, and we're shaking in our boots, but we're praying. And so God says, I don't want you to be praying out of fear. I want you to be praying out of trust and faith. And my prayer is that there is a peace that's gonna be released even across this screen, that God is gonna to begin to release a peace over the people who are receiving this message today and begin to bring a settling to your spirit. The very first verse says, says it like this, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And I'm just gonna go line, line upon line and just begin to, to really dissect this particular verse. I'm told you I'm teaching today, amen? Those who dwell so this tells me, even in the first verse here, the first word is telling me that there are some who do not dwell in the secret place. So, so, so this promise that we're about to read is not for every believer. You can put claims to it, but if you're not doing what it is that the psalmist is saying to do, then the benefits may not be yours. He says, those who dwell, amen, I want you to just type in the chat box, I dwell, I dwell, I dwell, I dwell. If I don't dwell, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start dwelling, amen. That word dwell means hashab, yashab, and it means to sit down. Just as I'm sitting here today, it means to sit down. It means to find a quiet place. It means to remain in a place that is settled. Yashab. He says, those who yashab, 
those who are settled, those who sit down. That means that this is a place where you reside. You have found residence here. You have found your home in this place of communion with the Father. That this is not a place where you uh, come every now and then in a place of communion and a place of fellowship. But he says this is a place where you frequent often because this is where you reside. This is where you have found your home. He says, those who live, those who dwell, those who sit down. Why? Why are you sitting down? You're sitting down because you're at home. In the secret place. That's that place of communion. That's that place of prayer. And maybe you've been so busy in your life that you have not found your, yourself dwelling in the secret place. God says, find your way back home. Find your, ba your way back to your residence because there's safety there. He says, those who dwell, those who yashab in the secret place. Some Bibles read that secret place is a place of shelter. It is a place of protection. It is a place of covering. It is a place of hiding, amen? He says, when you continually find your place in your home, in your resting place, in communion with the Father, you have found your shelter. You have found your protection. You have found your hiding place. And that secret place simply means that, 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 that when you find yourself in that place, amen, where you continually dwell in the secret place, amen, it's saying that, that this place comes between you and everything else. So I don't know what it is that you're freaking out about. I don't know what it is that you are, you are, you are uh, anxious over, that you are fearful over. He says, just find your residence and your home and your place in communion. Not a place where you are there every now and again, but a place where you can sit and be settled. A place where he can hide you and protect you. He says it's in this place that, that there is a, 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 a covering. There, there is a, a, a something that comes in between you and everything else. I need y'all to receive this today. He says this is the shelter of the Most High. The shelter of the Most High. That word simply means Elyon. And that means a place of elevation. It means a place of elevation. It means a place of elevation. So in your times of communion, in your times of, 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 of resting and sitting in the presence of the Lord, he says, I'm not only protecting you and, 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 and acting as a barrier. This place is not only acting as a barrier between you and everything else that is happening in this world. He says, but it also acts as an elevation and it is lifting you and rise, raising you above everything else that is trying to come against you. I need y'all to see this in the spirit because the one thing that the enemy wants to do is keep you from that secret place. Why does he wanna keep you from that secret place? Because he knows that the secret place, amen, acts as a, as a barrier from everything that he wants to, to project in your life, amen? So it's a place of elevation. Amen. You're resting in, in, the, in the place of the most high. Amen. There's a heavenly protection around you. There's a heavenly covering around you, not just you, but in even your entire family. There is a heavenly protection around you. Do y'all receive that today? He says there's, there's nothing that can come against you. And, and, and it's given permission to overpower you or overtake you unless God permits it. Say, I want to live in that place. Say, I, I want to live in that place. I want to live in that place. I want to live in that place. I want to live in that elevated place, in that place of communion, in that place of protection, that no matter what the enemy threatens to come against my life or threatens to come against my family, that he, he has to come up. He, he's going to have to be come up, amen, to where I am unless the Lord permits it to happen. 
Amen. And so I love this. He says, those who dwell in the shelter of the most high, watch this. He said, th this is, this is the promise. He says, you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So th there's no question about his coverage when you have found yourself in continual communion with the Father through prayer and through worship and the word of God. You live in this place. He says, this is the promise. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I just need somebody to type, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that word abide means loon in the Greek. Amen. It means loon. It means to stay permanently and to continue to dwell there. He says so that you don't find yourself in, 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 this, in this shadow, amen, or abiding in this shadow, amen, uh, temporarily. Or maybe you were abiding two years ago, but, but now this year you're not abiding, amen. He says when you find the, 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 the shelter, the secret place, a place that is called home for you, he says, you shall abide. There is a permanent residence for you under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. That shadow acts as a shade. That shadow. See, the only reason why you want a shadow is because you're trying to run away from the heat of the sun. There's no need for a shadow. There's no need for you to run under the shade if you're not intimidated by the heat or the intensity of the sun. And many of us are standing out here in this world, amen, being hit on so many different ends as a believer because we have not found our resting place under the shadow. His shadow acts as a defense. It acts as a shade. Amen. And this is a promise for those who dwell in the secret place. Amen. He says, I will say, he says, I will say, let me read it like this, that my God is my fortress and my refuge, and in him I will trust. The psalmist here has a confidence. And I'm telling you, many of us, have a confidence in many different areas of our life with the Lord. But maybe you can pinpoint an area of your life where you have been shaking in your boots and your confidence is wavering. Your confidence is not there. And it's not there because God has not been consistent in your life. It's not there because you have not come into the full knowledge of who God really is in this area. Amen. So the psalmist here, he says, I will say. Meaning I will declare, he's saying, I will declare this with boldness. That my God is my fortress. I just need somebody to just declare that in your house. My God is my fortress. No matter what it is that's happening all around you. My God is my refuge. He is my shelter. He is a trusted refuge of protection. Everything that I need can be found in him. When you call God your refuge, when you call God your fortress, what you are saying is that God, you know, you are my defense, that there is nothing that will be able to get through. There is nothing that will be able to get over, to get under, to get around. You are a fortress and I trust that you are. I trust that you are. No one or nothing that the enemy wants to bring into this earth and bring into this world or bring into my life. Nothing will be able to break through this fortress. You are my God, my fortress and my refuge. You are my Elohim. You are the supreme God. That's who I put my trust in. I just need somebody to be reminded of who you put your trust in. 
You're not putting your trust in someone who is inconsistent. You are not putting your trust in someone who has not had positive experiences with you. You are not putting your trust in just a man. Man will fail you at times, but you are putting your trust in God. And that's why the psalmist says, this is my God, my refuge. I'm taking ownership. I don't care what the world is speaking and is saying. They're putting their ownership in the world. They're putting their trust in the things of this world. I don't care what they are speaking, but I say God is my refuge. I just need somebody to take ownership of who God is in your life. The enemy has been playing these mind games and tricks on your ment mental, but I'm here to tell you that you stand confident and take ownership of who God is in your life. And I want you to tell yourself, self, God can be trusted. Amen. There's a boldness that this psalmist had. Where is your boldness? Where is your confidence? in the one who has been so faithful, in the one who has sent his only son to die on the cross for, when was the last time man gave up his son to die for you? If that's not trust, if that's not a great, the greatest foundation for trust, I don't know what is. You mean to tell me that he can give his son to die on the cross for your sins and save you, but he can't pay a bill? but we can't trust him to touch our body and heal us when we have become sick. But we can't trust him in other areas of our lives and our marriage with our children. With the darkness that, 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 that goes through the night and the things that are happening in this world. Confidence, boldness. I'm here to tell you, I can question a whole lot of people. There's a whole lot of people I can, I can question. But you would never be able to question the, the sufficiency of God. Your God is sufficient. Amen? He's God, not man. He can be trusted. And I just want to tell somebody today, he will not disappoint. He will not disappoint. What I've realized that even in, in, in studying this message, what I realized is that trust goes beyond just regular faith. So we can have regular faith, amen? But when you're talking about trusting someone, trust goes beyond just regular faith. Amen. Trust says I'm now able to rest. See, faith may not require rest. But when you trust someone with your life, when you trust someone with, with an area of your life, when you trust someone, that means what you're saying is I can rest in knowing that all will be well that I'm not losing another night's rest, I'm not losing sleep, I'm not losing my mind. I can rest because I trust God that he is everything that I need. He is everything that I hope for. He is everything to me. So trust says I can rest. I just need somebody to just breathe today. Amen. The psalmist says here, he says, listen, I'm taking a stand in who I believe God is. He says, I'm taking a stand in who I know God to be. Why? Because I'm confident in who God is. He says, I'm taking a stand. He's my, you know, I don't know who he is to you, but he is my fortress. He is my refuge. He is my deliverer. He is my provider. He is my stronghold. He is my refuge. He takes a stand. 
God may not be that to you, but he's mine. He, he, he's mine. And I put my trust and my confidence in that because he's mine. I don't need somebody to take ownership today. He said, he's mine. He's my refuge. He's my fortress. I don't care what the enemy is feeding me. I don't care what the news. Turn off the news. And stand on the fact that he is your refuge. He is your protection. He is your defense. He is your strong tower. He is your safety. Amen. And I believe that when you can trust God, on every end, you can trust God to be all of those things, no matter what area you're anxious over or anxious about or fearful about. When you can trust God is protecting you. Guess what it does? I want you to write this down. It opens the door to peace. When you can trust that God is protecting you, providing for you, uh, whatever it is that you're needing, amen. When you can trust that God is doing all that he is to do and, and is able to do in your life. When you can trust that God is with you, when you can trust that, it opens the door to peace. See, some of us are trying to have this man-made peace. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me just get some peace and quiet. Let me do, you know, all of this stuff. And it, and it, and it tarries and it, and it you know. You know, it, it, it varies, it wanes, amen. It's here today, gone tomorrow, amen. But when you reside in the shelter of the Most High, he says you can rest assured that it opens the door to continual peace in your life. So no matter if the, the, the tide changes or if the waves begin to come, if the storm begins to press in, no matter what's happening in the world around you, no matter how the cases are rising, no matter what people are contracting all around, of you, around you, you can find yourself settled and resting. Why? Because you trust God and you have rebuilt the pillar of trust that everything else that's coming against you must bow down to that thing. Amen to that pillar of trust, to your God, amen? Because he is the line of defense. Are y'all seeing this today? Say, my God is the line of defense, amen? He's all I need, hallelujah. And I just wanna tell you that, 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 that when trust is there, there is no room for fear. When you found trust in God, I'm talking about real trust, real faith. When you found trust in God, and you've seen people going through things. You're saying, my God, how are they facing this? How are they so settled? How are they? Th because they've tapped into the trust. They've tapped into the true knowledge of God. And they've built a pillar of trust. Amen. And they've opened the door to peace in their life. There's no room for fear where trust can be found. Are y'all seeing this today? There's no room for fear where trust is found. And my prayer is that the people of Emmanuel, light of the world, would find yourself trusting God. That we won't find ourselves arrested with fear and anxiety and worry and stressing over the same things that the world is stressing about. See, you know something. You have a knowledge of God that, they, that the world does not know about. And I want us to, to be the church that opens the door to peace and is able to help usher other people to that same thing. Are y'all hearing me this morning? If fear and anxiety has attacked your life, I just want you to lift your hands right now. And if you pray in the Holy Spirit, I want you to begin to lift a tongue, lift your tongues up right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we acknowledge that fear is present. Father God, we acknowledge that fear is present, that anxiety is present. Just say that if, if, that's, if fear is in your life, I want you to acknowledge. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that fear is present. But I also acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I also acknowledge that 
healing and deliverance is the children's bread and it belongs to me. Father God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for each and every individual that is dealing with fear and anxiety right now. And if there's any sin or any unforgiveness that they are harboring, harboring in their heart that might be keeping them from true freedom and deliverance, even as they open their mouths and begin to repent, begin to confess, I thank you, Father, for your forgiveness, for your love, for your kindness towards us in this. And Father God, I renounce and I break every ounce and every form of the spirit of fear operating in the lives of your people. I break the spirit of fear right now and I sever it at the root and I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has held them captive, held them bondage, I rebuke it now. I come against panic attacks. I come against torment. I come against fear. I come against anxiety, worry in the name of Jesus. And I command it to be broken from their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, just receive it now. I believe that people are being set free and delivered even now. They're receiving it now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just release your peace upon your children. I release your peace upon their hearts, upon their minds in the mighty name of Jesus. I release it now. I cover their mind. I cover their spirit. I cover their body. I even thank you right now, even those who have been losing sleep, having sleepless nights, God, you said in your word that you shall give your beloved rest. And so Father God, I thank you for the rest that they are resting in, physical rest that they're receiving right now in your presence. And Father God, I thank you that this pillar of trust has been rebuilt. That the knowledge that we didn't have is now here and the knowledge that we had forgotten has now been rekindled and has been reminded. And I thank you right now, Lord God, that we are walking in such a way that reflects where we reside. And that's in the shelter of the Most High, in an elevated place, where there is a defense and there is a covering from anything that would try to come against our life and come against our family. And we declare with all boldness and all confidence, just declare this today with me, my God is my refuge and my fortress and in God, I will trust in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you believe that and receive this message today, just shout hallelujah right on that live chat. Just shout hallelujah, throw up some hands. Amen. If you receive this word for your life, for your family, maybe you can take this word and minister it minister it to someone else who you know who have been dealing with anxiety and fear. Preach this word to them. Let God use you. Amen. And see how the Lord uses you and uses this message. Amen. To bless their life. Maybe you're here and you're saying, I have not received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to do that now. If that's you, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. It's as simple as admitting, believing and confessing. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner in need of salvation. I admit that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins. And on the third day, he rose again, that I might have life and have it eternally with him. And I confess out of my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God is the one and true and only God. And in him, I will trust. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, Emmanuel, everyone at Emmanuel is rejoicing right now. And we believe that the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now for your decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord. And we wanna walk with you, we wanna partner with you along this great journey, amen? And so if you would take out your cell phones and text the word at E-L-O-T-W life to the number 81010. That way we can connect, we can give you the material that you need and we can help you 
in this um, journey of discipleship. My prayer is that you were blessed by today's message. And I'm telling you, there's more to come in this month. Go ahead and start inviting folks. Amen. Let them know. Amen. Because I believe that God is going to do some great and mighty things in us through this series. You all be blessed.